and welcome to Views. Today we have with us Herman Jan Gerbrandi, a Dutch Liberal MEP here at the European Parliament. He's Rapporteur for the European Commission's Roadmap on Resource Efficiency and he's here to talk a bit today about resource efficiency also in its broader context, what it means in terms of green growth, in terms of Rio Plus 20 coming up later this year, in terms of sustainable development. Welcome. So we have coming up later this year Real Plus 20 and certainly the, the report you're working on in resource efficiency seems to me to fit very well with that. How do you envisage your work now carrying on and informing the EU's position for Real Plus 20? Yes, well, Rio Plus 20 is, is much about the green economy, um, the green world economy. And as far as I'm concerned, green economy is not some sort of sub-economy from the bigger grey economy. Green economy means that we are making our whole economy much more sustainable. And that's crucial because at the moment we are using uh, 1.5 planet Earth um, uh, in our economy and we just have one. We have no al alternative uh, to go to another planet. So we have to um, try to constrain ourselves in our consumption and production um, uh, beyond the limits, no, <laughs> within the limits of our planet. And that is, that is, for me, the crucial element of Rio Plus 20. Presumably for the EU to play a strong role, it, it would help if the EU could lead by example. Do you think the, the concept of green growth, which is also being promoted by the Danish presidency, has really taken root in the hearts and minds of, of European politicians? Not in all, unfortunately. Um, a lot of them still see it as some sort of hidden environmental agenda. Um, they see it as a, a minor part of, of uh, economic policy. Um, but if you look, look at some, some big businesses like Unilever or General Electric, if you see the amounts of money that they are spending on green R&D, that is incredible. It's 70-80% of their R&D is sustainability related. Um, and that's, that's not because they so much care about the environment. No, it's because they see huge business opportunities there. Um, so that's a crucial thing. Um, one of the the, the main challenges in Rio, plus, uh, in, in, the, in Rio de Janeiro will be to convince especially developing countries um, that this is not some sort of Western agenda to avoid them from uh, economic growth in the future, but that, that this is supporting them in their own economic growth, but in a much more sustainable way and in a much more, uh, I think, successful way in the future. And, convincing uh, the, the more poor parts of the world will be one of the key elements. And what's the role of, of innovation? Because many of the business opportunities, uh, I guess, are tied to innovation. Um, how big a role does this play? And within Europe, are we devoting enough attention to it also with the, the new budget proposals? And is there an opportunity here for developing countries too, as you say? Absolutely. Innovation is key. Um, Look at the, the, the biggest breakthroughs in, in environmental policy, but also in economic policy in general. It's, it's innovation, it's technological uh, developments. Um, so we have to focus a lot on that. Um, I must say that if, if you look at reports from big consultancy firm, it's, it's uh, impressing to see what is happening outside Europe in, in uh, emerging uh, economies what they are spending and developing in um, terms of, of uh, sustainable technology is really, really uh, incredible. So uh, we have to be careful as European Union that we are not coming very far much behind the emerging markets in this field. So I don't think that we have to convince uh, developing countries there. Um, we do have to tackle um, the, the transfer of technology. There are still too many countries that have um, uh, border taxes or border restrictions for the import or export of green technology. And I think we have to make sure that the technology that we have, that it flows much easier across the planet because then we will have huge benefits in environmental terms. How, how green is the, are the proposals for the next European budget? On the one hand, they should be providing support for innovation, but also in a more general sense. To what extent do you feel they support the resource efficiency agenda? Well, we, we are at a crucial moment uh, because we are uh, revive, revising uh, the agricultural policy, the fisheries policy, regional policy. Most major policies are, are being reviewed at the moment. And um, I think the European Commission in general has uh, made some, some good proposals. 
Um, they could be a little bit more green here and there, um, but in general they are um, pretty good. I'm not convinced yet that this House, this Parliament, uh, is as green, as sustainable as the European Commission. And I'm even more concerned about the, the member states, uh, especially, especially in the field of uh, fisheries policy, where short-term um, interest of fisheries industry seems to be um, more important to many member states than the longer term uh, benefits for uh, fisheries industry. The same accounts for, accounts for agriculture. This is the moment to get a much greener agriculture in Europe. And if we don't do it now, um, the policy is locked for another, well, almost 10 years. So um, it's, it's crucial and I'm, well, slightly positive that we uh, reach the right uh, agreements on this. And finally then, if we're looking at the, the kind of vision Europe is setting out both for itself and taking to Rio Plus 20, uh, one of the other policies in, in, the, in the pipeline is a 7th EAP, a 7th Environmental Action Programme. What kind of logic do you see for this when on the one hand we're trying to integrate environment policy into all policy areas, on the other hand we're talking about a plan just for the environment for the next 10 years? Yes, well, the, the, the European Commission was rather reluctant with um, introducing a new environmental action programme. Um, we as Parliament and the Council wanted it very badly. I think it is important, um, especially for uh, mainstreaming, for the integration of environmental um, uh, elements in other policies. We, we still, unfortunately, in this not yet ideal world, we still need uh, to focus much on the environment uh, with, uh, for instance, a seventh uh, environmental action program. So it's important to, to, under, to have a co coherent narrative for all of environment policy that then can be taken into other policy areas? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, look at what's happening in, in the Council, where the Environment Council uh, decided not to touch upon the topic of biodiversity and agriculture. They left it to their colleagues uh, who are responsible for agriculture. I see that as a sort of surrender to agriculture because I believe that the environment minister should be the ambassadors of the interests of biodiversity, of the environment. Um, so I'm, I'm not very, very optimistic about that, but uh, I'll fight for it in parliament to uh, make it much more uh, ambitious than uh, the council might want to. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching Views. That was Gerben Jan Gerbrandi, a Dutch Liberal MEP here at the European Parliament in Brussels. Thank you.